Hi everyone and welcome to Cut the Kibble. I'm Paula and this is Miss Bella, my 11 year old Bijan. I've been cooking for her since she was like, I don't know, eight months because my doctor told me get her off the kibble because she was getting very sick from it. And today, no, I'm not in the kitchen, um, but I want to talk about cooking. I want to talk about, um, I'm hearing a lot of people they want to home cook and they're all confused. They don't know where to start. I literally just read a post from one of my groups saying, hi, I want to have a recipe for my new dog that includes chicken, rice, potatoes, carrots, and peas. And it just made me cringe. I mean, I, I commend everyone for wanting to either get off the kibble or to home cook. I, I just think that's fantastic. But let's try to start doing it the right way. So what I decided to do in this video is to do a home cooking 101, just give you the basics. It's not gonna give you everything, but it's gonna get you on a good start. So let, let's do this. Okay, the first thing you need to do is to choose a protein. Now everything I'm saying needs to be done in rotation. Like, do you want to eat spaghetti every night? Or do you want to eat um, pizza every night? Uh, you may want to eat pizza every night, but it's not good for you. Okay, and it's especially not good for dogs because if they eat the same foods day in and day out, they start to get an, an, an allergy from that perhaps. Okay, so the first big important ingredient in your home cooking is protein. Now, a lot of dogs, evidently, including this one, is allergic to chicken. You can try chicken, but I would do beef, turkey, and throw in a salmon or a white fish once a week. Now, how much do you put in the full recipe? And I'm not, I'm not talking about just what you feed your dog once or twice a day because you wanna cook in a little bulk to make it easy for you, right? I would say in general terms, 60% of the recipe should be the protein. Now, everything I'm talking about is for a healthy dog. If your dog has kidney problems, or diabetes, or cancer, this video is not for you, okay? And let me say, I'm not a vet, but I've been cooking for 11 years, okay? Um, so, protein, the beef. You wanna make sure it's like, um, own, not a lot of fat, because if you do too much fat in a dog's diet, they can get pancreatitis. So, get the beef that's 4% fat or 8% fat. You can get ground beef or what I do, I go into the store and they have manager specials and I love getting the London broil. I got two yesterday that was like $7.48 for a big London broil. And I stick that in my slow cooker and oh my goodness, it's so, it smells so good with the other stuff that you put in. And with the turkey, um, you don't want to use skin. Skin is too much fat. I would do turkey breast, okay? If you can get that in the ground, in the ground turkey, that's good. And then salmon, if you want to do that once a week, salmon is very good for dogs. You can do um, fresh or you can get canned salmon if you want to you go low budget. Speaking of low budget, uh, this girl gets eggs every morning. I do an egg casserole and I put in all the other good stuff. So I'm giving you four proteins that you should add to the recipe at 60%. And these are four different recipes. Don't I don't combine. So it's beef, turkey, salmon, and eggs. I would only do salmon once a week. All right, uh, the next thing is your vegetables. So this woman wanted to do peas, carrots, and potatoes. Well, if you look at any kibble bag, 
they have peas, carrots, and white potatoes, okay? Why do they do that? Because it's cheap, okay? And why should you not do it? Because all of those vegetables are high starchy, high starch, high cap carbs, high sugar. It turns into sugar in the, into the dog's body. The dog's gonna get overweight. And there's many, many, many dogs that are getting diabetes. Why are they getting diabetes? Because they're having kibble that has all these high starchy vegetables in the beginning of the ingredients, okay? So I do, I never, I've ne she's never had a pea. I don't do carrots. I may give her a carrot to treat on, but it's not in her diet, her rest of the recipes. And I do not do white potatoes. On occasion, I do sweet potato, only on occasion. All right, so what vegetables should you use? All right. You wanna use low starchy vegetables, and they are broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, what am I missing? Asparagus are excellent. Um, and they sound a little bit expensive, but if you belong to a warehouse store, you can get the broccoli and the cauliflower or cauliflower rice in big quantities cheap. Asparagus are expensive. You just got to shop around. I was at the grocery store just two days ago and they were $1.49 a pound. And I got six pounds and I roasted them up and I have them in the freezer ready to go, okay? Um, so we talked about that. Now, why do I have the word blue here? Oh, yeah. The next thing I would, there's two things that also I would always put in the diet, and this is not in rotation. She always gets it. Blueberries and sardines. Why? Because they're high in antioxidants and they're high in omegas, mega threes. So uh, with the blueberries, again, I get them in the warehouse. I get a big frozen bag of blueberries. And for a pound of meat, I put in a half a cup of blueberries. For the sardines, I buy them in the can and they must be sardines packed in water. Okay, do not get sardines packed in soybean oil. Just stay away from soybean oil for you too. Do not get sardines packed in olive oil or tomato sauce, water. You can find them, I don't know where you live. Amazon has them, Trader Joe's has them. Um, Costco does not sell in water. And you wanna make sure where they're sourced. Do not get any, any food from anywhere in Asia especially um, the seafood. They have very bad uh, cleaning practices over there for this, the seafood. Um, I get my sardines, it says, you know, packed, made and whatever, caught in Canada. And I also stay away from San Diego because um, personally I feel the uh, nuclear power plant in Fukushima in Japan, I, I've seen maps where all that waste has come over to the Pacific coast of California. So I, I stay away from that. All right, and now you say, wow, that's really expensive. And it's not because you get your beef on sale and you get your vegetables in, in warehouse stores. Filler, what kind of filler can you use? All right, well, I have Bella on a grain-free and dairy-free diet, but she used to have grains. Um, the reason I stopped, I was giving her pasta. <laughs> hey, I'm Italian. And um, I noticed that she was getting, um, she was licking and getting her, her fur all red. And it was from the pasta. But you can try pasta. You can uh, try oats, cooking oatmeal and adding that to the recipe for the fillers to stretch out you know, your budget. I would suggest doing non-GMO oats so that you're not giving your dog any glyphosate from um, Monsanto. Um, one filler that I use is pinto beans. And what I do is I'll get a, a bag of dried pinto beans 
and I'll cook them overnight in my slow cooker and uh, no salt because the salt makes the beans tough. And then I'll pre-measure packages, like a half a cup each, and stick it in the freezer, and then I'll add that to the recipe, okay? All right, so um, another thing that I feel every be beginner, I mean, I, I still do it, but I feel you need to add a probiotic to your food to help the good flor fluoride in the gut. I buy my probiotic and most of my supplements through Animal Essentials. You can go at animalessentials.com and uh, see all their products. And another thing that I would suggest, she gets a preventive maintenance once a week of D Manos. That is uh, D hyphen M A N N O S E. Just D Manos, nothing else in it, no cranberries, nothing. And you can get that on Amazon. And I'll try to put links to this Animal Essentials and D Manos and everything. Um, in my video. But what that does is prevents her from having UTIs and crystals in her urine. Now I've been doing this for her for around six, seven years. She has never had a UTI, okay, or crystals. Speaking of that, the most important ingredient for your food, believe it or not, is water. Water, 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 water. Now she does not drink water, only if she's really hot. So uh, for starters, home cooking has around 86% water in it because you, know, you have the vegetables and all that stuff. I'm not making these numbers up. Kibble only has 3% water. Just think about it. I mean, you're not even getting beef. It's just, it's just, beef meal and it's just dead carcass. It's just, don't get me started. Um, and that's why a lot of dogs have kidney stones because they're eating dry kibble. So getting back to water, water is so important for your dog and for yourself. I don't drink enough water, but she certainly does because not only is she getting her 80%, 86% liquid from just home cooking, but I'm adding water to her meal each time I give her a meal. She eats twice a day. I either give her water or bone broth that I make. I have a recipe. You can look on my YouTube for that. Um, basically, her food has the consistency of like a beef stew, meaning the liquid, okay? It's, I just can't talk enough about putting water into your dog's diet, making sure it's clean water, not just water out of your tap. Get a filter if you have to. Um, and there you go. I mean, I think I've done everything um, I wanted to talk about. Now, these are just beginnings. If you're going to home cook again, I don't want you to do chicken, peas, and carrots, and potatoes. I mean, yeah, that's better than kibble, but why don't you get off on a good start? Okay, thank you so much um, for listening, and I'm just delighted that you want to home cook. It's the best thing that you can do for your dog. That's it. Bye-bye.